Ah, the rat men, the plagued kind, the festering nightmare of Lustria that will not end. It is only maniacs or zealous fools that decide to invade the home of the lizard people, and of these two, Skrulk is both at the same time. At least I am merely insane and my insanity can be cured, whereas Skrulk is mad enough to inject some of the worst plagues directly into himself while fighting with zeal for his vile god. This kind of thinking is why the rats have never taken over the world, despite all their attempts at doing so. Still, he does have a mighty army and potential allies close by to aid him, if he can rescue them from the vast hordes of lizards that will descend on them. If he manages that, then the whole world might fall under the swarm of rats. Hello everyone, Costini here with my campaign overview guide for Lord Skrulk of the Skaven in Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. Lord Skrulk is actually substantially more powerful than a lot of people give him credit for. People think about Ekekla or Frat or some other legendary lords, but Skrulk actually has a really good campaign uh, situation. Not necessarily the best campaign mechanics, but he does have a pretty good start if you know what you're doing. Why is that though? Well, he has a minor Skaven faction next to him that he can get a good relations with. And having an ally from the very start of your campaign is actually important in a lot of campaigns because these allies over here, the Skaven that control the Altar of the Horned Rat, can be very useful in distracting enemies that you're going to have to the north. And you are going to have enemies to the north, in particular Gore Rock. So they can be very useful in helping you out from the very start of your campaign. On top of that, there is a potential of getting another ally very quickly in this campaign. So over here to the south, we have the Cult of Sotek. Now the Cult of Sotek is going to wipe out the Skaven here in uh, the settlement uh, Clan Skrat. They're going to wipe out Clan Skrat very quickly. But the thing is, you can prevent that from happening. You just need to fight two difficult battles or early on here. You need to defeat this army. You need to take the Sentinel of Time. And then you need to march over here to deal with the Cult of Sotek. It is a fight that's winnable. Now, the Cult of Sotek, even on the highest difficulty, legendary, very hard, they're not going to be able to take this settlement instantly because it does have a pretty decent garrison. And the Cult of Sotek's army is not going to be significant enough to deal with these guys. So, if you rush over here... You can get two Skaven factions to help you out in your campaign. And these guys can help hold the south. You can deal with the Sentinels of Time, take the planes, and then march north to deal with Itza. But let's talk about faction benefits. You have a chance of increasing uh, plague spreading by 100%. Plagues bolster your forces and nurture your settlements. You get the construction cost benefit for... Uh, for the main plague buildings, or rather for the building chain that is related to plagues uh, for uh, for the Skaven. So specifically what we're talking about here is the Pox Cauldron and to the Plague Abbey. That's uh, the benefit that you get here as Lord Skrulk. Now skill-wise with Skrulk, uh, when we're looking at him, he can cause terror, he can get Plague Priest recruitment, in old provinces, hero capacity, hero recruitment rank for Plague Priest, Skaven Corruption, leadership benefit, and diplomatic relations with Skaven. Now, this particular benefit is actually more substantial than you might think, because the Skaven, all of them, have an ancillary that can give and that can allow them to increase the hero capacity of Plague Priests and Eshin Sorcerers. So you can get a lot of Plague Priests during the course of your campaign if you're playing a scroll. Now, they're not necessarily the best heroes, but they do have a good amount of power. And one of the things you want to do as uh, Skaven, you also start with the Putrid Rice Box. You can get that very quickly, get the Settlement to Tier 2. And I would probably recommend when you take the Settlement, the uh, Sentinels of Time, I'd probably recommend you set it up as a Tier 2 Settlement. And what you start doing is start recruiting, uh, is get the Hidden Lair and start recruiting Assassins and start recruiting Night Runners and Night Runners with Slings because that's the best Skaven playstyle that you can have. The reason behind that is that there's skirmish and infantry units that can run in circles around many enemies. And in particular against the Lizardmen, they will do very well because the Lizardmen tend to be, uh, tend to focus on getting a lot of melee units. And their range units are not quite capable of dealing with your night runners or rather your night runners with slings. But you do have a bunch of army choices if you're playing as a Skrulk. You're not tied to any particular army choice, though you can obviously benefit from getting Plague Monks, 
uh, and Plague Monk census bearers. But outside of that, you have a bunch of choices over here when it comes to your army roster. My recommendation for every Skaven Legendary Lord, focus on the Hidden Layer, focus on Night Runners, focus on Gutter Runners eventually, and then Death Runners. And of course, also get the Poisoned Wind Mortars eventually, like uh, start by getting the Weapons Dump, or rather, once you get uh, your main camp, your main settlement at tier three, start getting global deers, and eventually upgrade into poison wind mortars and death globe uh, bomber deers, because those guys can deal a significant amount of range damage. Now, the benefit with Skrulk is, while his army overall is ne isn't necessarily the very best you can get, you do start with two really powerful siege units and play claws, and play claws can do an enormous amount of damage in range. Again, you don't have the, necessarily the best uh, hero choice at the beginning. Skrulk isn't necessarily going to do very well in his combat in terms of combat, but you do have those play claws and you should use them. So defeat the Cult of Sotic, or rather just defeat this army. You don't necessarily need to take down his capital instantly, but if you can take down his capitals, uh, give it to these guys while building a second army over here. Clan Rats initially, and then Night Runners and Gut Runners. You can then deal with the Sentinels of Time. Now, campaign victory conditions, you just need to basically deal with the main lizard faction. So you need to take Itza, Hexoatl, all of these major uh, cities. And also likely de defeat Alberic and even Lufer Harkon because he's going to likely take one of these elements and you're going to have to deal with him. Another thing to mention is you can make a deal with uh, these Nurglings over here that Gorak tends to wipe out very quickly. But if you can move quickly enough, you might be able to save them uh, save them from being wiped by Gorok, but chances are that's not going to happen. What you want to do is defeat the Sentinels of Time before Gorok uh, becomes a problem. He's likely going to lay siege to this particular settlement, so don't expect the settlement to last long, and you shouldn't focus necessarily on it. Like, deal with the issues in the south, not necessarily the High Elves, but the Lizardmen in the south, and then march your armies north to deal with Gorok. It is going to be a difficult battle, but by that point you should be able to have a decent number of Night Runners, you should still have these play claws, and you should probably have one and a half stack, maybe even two stacks of troops to be able to throw at the issue. Don't be afraid of just massing clan rats to overwhelm the enemy, though just bear in mind Gorok has enormous benefits to his Saurus, and he starts with the ability to recruiting Saurus, so he gets barrier for Saurus, especially on the defense. Uh, he also has that right, which gives them barrier in general. So he has a great deal of durability. But what he doesn't have when he's played by the eye because he doesn't have Lord Croak, he doesn't have the nuking capability that uh, Krokar gives him. Now, once you deal with Aitza, your next target should probably be Lufer Harkon or Alberic. Like, maybe avoid dealing with Lufer Harkon, deal with the demons, take out Alberic and then march over here to deal with the Hunts Marshal. Eventually, you are going to have to deal with Rakarf one way or another, but I probably wipe out Alberic and the Hunts Marshal before deciding to deal with Rakarf, and then deal with uh, Rakarf uh, and the Deserters of Katep. Now, you also, of course, have the Dwarves, the Spine of Sotek Dwarves, which might become an issue. Uh, once you deal with Gorok, you might actually just want to move and deal with their capital. Uh, very, very quickly and efficiently, and also just take this entire province. So that said, Skaven don't necessarily want to have provinces with, with just two regions. They can benefit from a commandment to get extra food, but their economy is not going to reach their full potential with just two regions. Ideal, you want four, but three can work pretty well. So you want to avoid uh, provinces with just two regions. So you don't want this prominence in the Night Forest Road. You don't want the capes. What you want are the plains over here, um, the plains, the Lost Valley, Itza itself, uh, in the river, the Mosquito Swamps, of course, these other provinces. But the provinces would just do two settlements, like the Headhunter Jungle, the Volcanic Islands. Those should go for, uh, for your allies, and you should try and keep them alive. Though, if you're expecting these Miner Skaven to achieve much in their campaign, don't necessarily be surprised when they do end up losing their stacks again and again and again. Even major Skaven factions, when controlled by the AI on the highest difficulties in the game, do tend to get wiped out. So Frot generally loses, uh, all the other Skaven tend to lose. And that might be something that dictates the course of your campaign over here, because you do have the ability to take 
uh, sea route over here. Or a bit further north, there, there is uh, another one. But you do have some sea lanes that you can go use to go into cafe and maybe help, um, uh, maybe help uh, Death Master snitch before he gets wiped out because he can give you a lot of value in your campaign. Or you can ignore snitch or maybe help him out with like a secondary or third uh, third army. Or you can ignore that and just start heading over here, take Sartosa. And then try heading into the Badlands to help Queek before he gets wiped out. Now, you won't be able to help Frot, and you may not be able to help Clan Rictus, but you can help. And Kekulado, his survivability tends to be pretty good in a campaign. That's because of the enormous garrison that Skaven Blight itself does have, even as a tier 1 settlement. And Ekekla is certainly going to grow it very, very quickly. Well, though, he does tend to lose in the long term to Belagar and other factions that do swarm around him. But it's Quick that is vulnerable. It's uh, eventually, like Quick is the most vulnerable. Snitch is then vulnerable, and Clan Rectus is also very vulnerable under Trash Craven Tail. I don't think I've seen a campaign on Legendary very hard where Tretch actually managed to survive against all the factions that are raided against them. But then again, Tretch doesn't really matter. His settlement is the real valuable part because it has the Rectus Great Clan Hall. So in the long term, you might want to take that for the benefits that you do have. Now, one of the things I would probably advise is to set up some undercities in certain parts of the campaign map that you don't care about. So if you can set up some undercities in Ulf 1 via heroes, specifically by doing the Scheme of Doom, sending a Warlock Engineer, setting up an undercity, uh, then you can gain some a significant amount of food over here. And the thing about Ulf 1 is... It's very unpleasant climate, or rather uninhabitable climate, so you're not going to want to conquer it because it's a waste of time, so you might just want to set up uh, your undercities over there for the food uh, generation, as well as increasing your engineer capacity via the Scheme of Doom. You don't necessarily want to use this engineer on the closest element. In fact, you want to use it on a settlement that's uh, decently far away, uh, so, you can, uh, so you can actually expand that undercity. Uh, then, of course, you have the plagues. The problem that Skrulk does have in his campaign is that the only way he can get the plague is to use the Pestilence Scheme. Now, the issue with, with it is it's not necessarily the best way of, of spreading plague. I would say Skrulk would really benefit for, from having at least some of the Nurgle mechanics. Maybe not the whole Ephra of abilities that Nurgle has, but at least to a certain extent, or maybe his own unique plagues, that would really work in this campaign because the Pestilence Scheme is a powerful plague. It will do a lot of damage, but it is difficult. It can be difficult to spread it to your own settlements, which actually do want uh, to have. In fact, you would want to have some minor plagues of Nurgle just to get the faction benefits that you get from plagues uh, in general. But that's your campaign situation. Yeah, just defeat this army of the Sentinels of Time. Take the Sentinel of Time. Um, or the Southern Sentinels, take the Sentinel of Time, and then march south very quickly to defeat the Cult of Soktek before they wipe these guys out. It is achievable on Legendary if you move very quickly. And then after that, you'll have two allies available very quickly in your campaign, and you can do 